Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. New York Times nasty new editor compares whites to dogs on hydrants. Patriots make her pay. In a stunning display of racist bigotry and an even more frightening display of hypocrisy, the New York Times announced this week it had hired Sarah Young as the newest member of its editorial board. Since the internet is forever, Twitter quickly revealed Jiang's stunning animus towards white people in a multitude of racist tweets. Jiang tweeted her hope that white people would go extinct soon, and used a cancel white people hashtag and sent numerous other offensive tweets. The tweets were unearthed earlier this week after the NEET announced Jiang was joining the paper. Yet the NEET just recently fired the writer Quinn Norton within hours of hiring her because of alleged racism yet for reasons known only to them, the NEET has chosen to stand by Jiang. As the Daily Caller's Amber Athey notes, Jiang previously wrote for The Virgin authored a book about online harassment and free speech titled The Internet of Garbage. One of Jiang's tweets from 2016 reads, We've censored curse words out of respect to our readers, deem bass fking white people marking up the internet with their opinions like dogs piecing on fire hydrants. Another reads oh man it's kind of sick how much joy I get out of being cruel to old white men. In a total lack of self-awareness of just how vile and full of hatred she is. Jiang simply claimed her offensive comments were just that of a young Asian woman imitating the rhetoric of her own online harassers. The Neet issued a statement standing by her in an astounding display of hypocritical double standard. Fox News reports Dash. Conservative columnist Daniela Greenbaum told Fox News that the issue at hand here is not about whether Jiang's tweets were racist or not. Greenbaum says that hypocrisy is the real issue. Jiang claimed she was kidding. Good enough, I guess, although swap the word white and insert black, Mexican, or Jewish in any of her tweets and I have a feeling we'd be having a very different conversation," Greenbaum said. Much like Jiang, Greenbaum is a young columnist who has garnered a lot of attention. But Greenbaum is a staunch conservative, who last month resigned from her job as a columnist at Business Insider after the website removed an already published piece defending Scarlett Johansson for signing on to play a transgender man. The piece apparently offended some of her liberal colleagues and Greenbaum walked away from her job after being censored. Johansson later backed away from the role. Greenbaum, who didn't exactly receive overwhelming support during her own ordeal, noticed that many in the media industry have rushed to defend Young. The New York Times and much of the media chose to believe that she was kidding or to posit that even if she wasn't kidding, her misguided beliefs are not reason enough to fire her. In other words, they extended her a brand of courtesy never offered to people who are right of center. Greenbaum said. That's the issue here. High-powered liberal media members such as HuffPost editor-in-chief Lydia Paul Green and leadership at The Verge, where Jiang currently works, have defended her rhetoric. The former Business Insider columnist said we have created an enormous, hypocritical double standard that is entirely unjust when it comes to judgment in the media industry. Let's see how Jiang reacts next time a conservative finds themselves in a similar situation. Something tells me she won't speak out on their behalf, Greenbaum said. Yet as Zero Hedge notes, now you might be thinking Dash maybe the Neat simply overlooked these tweets when hiring her, and she'll surely be fired like they did with Quinn Norton after her derogatory tweets about black and gay people were unearthed. Nope, in fact, the paper not only says they knew about the tweets as part of her vetting process, they said her bigoted tweets were simply imitating other racists. Her journalism and the fact that she is a young Asian woman have made her a subject of frequent online harassment. For a period of time, she responded to the harassment by imitating the rhetoric of her harassers. Jiang provides two examples of such harassment that justified her dozens of rants about white people, along with a statement which reads I engaged in what I thought at the time as counter-trolling. While it was intended as satire, I deeply regret that I mimicked the language of my harassers. These comments were not aimed at a general audience, because general audiences do not engage in harassment campaigns. I can understand how hurtful these posts are out of context and would not do it again. Twitchy reported, the New York Times new editorial board member Sarah Jiang has been taking quite a beating today over her racist tweets about dumbass fucking white people, and for her BS explanation for it. But in the interest of fairness, we feel like we should point out that Jiang apparently doesn't just hate white people. Conservative African-American radio host Larry Elder weighed in, drawing a comparison between Jiang's vile racist epithets spewed across Twitter over and over again and Roseanne Barr's single racist tweet Ash. Almost immediately, the thin-skinned and overly sensitive racist Jiang blocked Elder on Twitter. Twitchy wrote about blocking Elder, Now, now, Sarah, that's not how you prove that you're really tolerant at heart, is it? As a woman of color on the internet, 
Shouldn't you be more cognizant of the vitriol hurled at minority conservatives on a daily basis? Shouldn't you offer them your support instead of cutting them off from your wisdom? Jiang also blocked actor James Woods but that did not stop Woods from continuing to tweet about the bigoted editor. Woods tweeted, Welcome to your new job at the New York Times, Sarah. Do we now get to endure even more race hatred from that August publication? It seems Jiang's racist vitriol spewed all over the Twitterverse may even be helping President Donald Trump in his upcoming re-election bid in 2020. As one Twitter user notes, I did not vote for Trump. I don't particularly like Trump, but damn you media types are pushing me toward him, I imagine I'm not the only one. Yet the far left continues to be utterly tone deaf. Leftist rags like the Huffington Post breathlessly virtue signal their support and report drivel, stating, the proper way to respond to a bad faith troll campaign like the one the right-wing internet is waging on Sarah Jung, the newest member of the New York Times editorial board, is to not respond at all, to not even listen in the first place. Proving these publications will soon become obsolete and return to obscurity where they belong, the hashtag Sarah Jiang racist is trending on social media. It is far beyond mere right-wing trolls as the American people are more than fed up. We are simply not buying the bigoted rhetoric and racist bashing, of being accused of racism for simply existing. It is neither true nor accurate. Movements such as the Walk Away campaign have been born because of the continuation of this level of nonsense. Meanwhile, President Trump's re-election is virtually guaranteed as the racist, leftist bigots continue to reveal themselves and publicly lose their minds. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.